Hi guys, Gabi from Path Hacks here. Today I have a quick video. What are the process arguments we can set in Orchestrator when we are creating a process or setting up a trigger and when do they especially come in handy? So what are the process arguments? In previous versions of the UiPath platform, they were called process parameters, and they're passing directly from Orchestrator some values for the argument of the main file of the automation. They're basically nothing more than arguments, the ones we were probably already using heavily in our workflows in Studio, but now these ones are exposed directly to Orchestrator. Now, why could this be very useful? I found it to be particularly useful when we think about rolling out an automation to different countries or different departments. If you can run an automation from the same tenant for different entities, you want to avoid duplicating the code, ideally, especially if you intend to keep the same version of the automation for all the parties involved. And duplicating the code makes it harder to maintain it later. But somewhere you have to specify you want it triggered for different entities, like countries, for example, or departments and potentially to have some different config files for the different countries. And here's where the process argument comes in handy. We can set up triggers with different parameters. There are three levels at which we can define values for these arguments. One of them is in Studio, in our main workflow. And we can define, for example, default values here. I've put RO as a country in this example. And then we can also define our values in the process itself so if we go to our process here, process with params, we can go to edit and here in arguments I have for example another default value and here it's DE for Germany and we will see that this value here in the process will actually overwrite the default value in Studio. And a third place to set them up is if we create triggers, we can also set a value as we schedule the trigger here we can select our process and for arguments we can modify here as well the value. Let's put France here, let's give it a name and we can edit so to run in a few seconds. We can check the jobs and it ran a few seconds ago. Let's stop the trigger maybe and in the job if we check the logs, we see that it has run for France. So in the automation, we just log a message with the country and then we pass an out argument as well. We will look at it a bit later. So we have run a trigger with France. Now if we go back to processes and we just start the process, we can change the argument. But if we leave it like this and don't put a value, Let's see what will happen. It should pick the country from the default value of the process itself, which was Germany. Let's go to jobs, view the logs, and we have Germany here. So the argument value in the trigger is checked first. If there is no value defined, then it takes the value from the process. And if there is no default value there or no value given at runtime, then it takes the value given in studio. This is a stepping stone in linking processes together. Only the in, out and in arguments defined here in the main workflow in Studio are exposed to other apps. And the arguments are saved also in the project JSON file. It helps separate processes to communicate between themselves. And we have already seen how the in and out parameters of the main files are being used in the UiPath apps. And I've made a few videos on that. You can check them out. Now we've seen that we have one input argument and one output argument. I think the most heavily used are the input arguments because we get arguments from orchestrator or from triggers, but there are also some output arguments. Um, I've defined here one such argument with a default value. And the idea of these output arguments is that they are being sent back to orchestrator. And from there, they could be somehow further processed by another process um, that is maybe reading the logs. But we can see this output argument in orchestrator when we look at the job 
and we check out the job details. Here's where we see the input argument as well as the output argument. And that was it. I hope this quick video was useful and it will give you more flexibility when designing your automations and rolling them out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel to be informed of future uploads. Thank you for watching and have a great day.